I think I understand the answer to that okay, one. Okay, okay. Um, and while we're just finishing this up, what do you think of Greta Thunberg and what she's done? I've been watching. I mean, I, I look, I, I, I'm always skeptical, especially people who catch the media's attention, but she's really impressed me uh, as a young person. I tweeted a, 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 a small speech. She said, just because, well, uh, uh, someone, she was, t- she was testifying before Congress, and one of these Congress people basically more or less said, you know, why should we listen to the scientists on climate change? And she looked at him saying, what, you know, what kind of stupid, this is a 16 year old, and she said, why would we not listen to the scientists? I mean, it's an obvious question, but the fact that you need a 16 year old to say it is, is remarkable, and she does it with such poise. Um, I, I think she captured the imagination and the fact that she's impacted, you know, on the, this climate strike thing, I'm always a little worried of gimmicks. But the fact that it raises awareness is very good. And she is, as a, as a young spokesperson, is remarkably powerful. Now, I don't know what group she has behind her and, and, and the rest. And, and I've seen lately reactions that, that do worry me. I mean, so I, I do events and we're running educational events. We're taking a group to the Mekong to look at the, uh, uh, one of the things the Origins Project Foundation is doing is running a trip with Richard Dawkins and a climate scientist, Richard Somerville, um, to the Mekong Delta in January, and there are still some births available, so people should go and look, um, to look a, a number of things besides the culture of that region, but also the, it's an area that's gonna be directly impacted by climate change in a large amount. And, and some people are saying, well, yes, but you shouldn't travel. There's all these people basically saying, and I, I was told that, that the Heathrow, was they were thinking about closing it, a, or, or, or canceling flights a few days ago because some climate activists were going to be flying drones into, in, into um, Heathrow to try and limit that because they're objecting to planes, which of course do produce greenhouse gases. But to argue that we, we, we have to stop global travel to deal with this, I think is just is, is, is impractical at best. It's just unrealistic. We need people, there are other, you can, you can have an impact and not have everyone take solar powered boats around the world. We, we just can't sustain the global marketplace the way we do. We have, and we can also design planes, of course, that use less, use less fossil fuels. We can, do not, we can develop technologies that'll do that. Maybe even, although I'm skeptical, maybe even you know, electric powered planes at some point. But, so but, still make the trips because yeah, the education is important. Well, I think we can't, uh, yeah, and not only that, I actually think for young people, the most important education they can get is to see another culture. Right, and uh, so when, when the reaction that comes, uh, and I, it was nice of her as maybe a publicity center, or maybe she really believes it, to take this solar powered boat from from to across the Atlantic Ocean to come to the United States. It was a demonstration that you know she was, could do that. But I, I don't want people to get the wrong idea that we have to we have to. In fact, that's the biggest way to get to stop people from taking action. To say that they have to give up everything they have in order to fight the problem. Right. We can't do that. That's the we, wrong attitude. That's the wrong attitude completely. We have, to, we have to be careful and rethink certain things. We should try, I mean, those people who can become vegetarians probably become vegetarians because there's no doubt that that meat industry produces a lot of climate change. If you can't become vegetarian, eat less meat. Um, uh, sure, drive your car less maybe. Um, and, uh, and one big thing, which is sort of the elephant in the room that's often not discussed is the biggest contribution to pollution and climate change is population. If, and so think about the size of the family you want to have. And, and uh, um, that's a, one less child, and I hate to put it this way, people are going to get angry and think I'm awful, but one less child that you have is one huge impact on reducing, because it's, a, it's the integrated lifetime of that child and the, and, and, and the carbon that they're going to produce. And, uh, and besides the uh, impact on resources and everything else. And so uh, I think uh, there are many positive ways to address the problem without giving up everything you have. And, and the people who are trying to get people to react are, are, are threatening. People like Trump are saying, well, these people are going to take away everything you have for this climate change thing. They're going to destroy the economy. And, and, you know, and then there are people who are hyperbole on the other side. Uh, Al Gore, who's actually in, in London this week to speak at the same group I'm speaking to, the How To Academy I'm 
We talk on Thursday, and I think he's maybe talking today or tomorrow. But he's pointed out uh, uh, that uh, that this is an opportunity for people to make money. It's an opportunity to develop new technologies. Uh, and if, if viewed that way, and that's what Obama used to say uh, as well, that addressing climate change is an opportunity to develop new technologies that will productively help countries move into the 21st century at the same time as doing good. Yeah. And if it doesn't make economic sense, it's hard to get people to do it. You can't really shame them into it, right? No, I mean, we, well, I mean, you, to some, yeah, you can't. I mean, you can shame people. You, basically, look, I used to tell teachers and I tell radio hosts and podcast people and, and salespeople the same thing, but I used to tell teachers the biggest mistake any teacher makes is to assume their, student, their students are interested in what they have to say. But it's true of anyone. If you want to convince people to do something, you can't, no one's going to listen to me and talk. What I have to do is go to where they are, talk about something that they hold dear to themselves, and try and get them to think about it in those terms. And so, uh, yeah, you can't shame someone, but you can get them to think about things and maybe convince themselves. So I think that's, that you can do to some extent. But you're right, if, it, if, if people feel that their livelihood is threatened and the comfort and, and well-being of their children are threatened, they're not going to act. And I think what we have to convince people of, because it's true, is that if we don't act appropriately, the livelihood and well-being of their children will be affected. And that the fact that the children are recognizing that and saying, you are the ones who are leaving us this future, you won't have the future to deal with, we'll have to deal with it, and so you should be doing something now for your kids, that's probably the biggest problem in dealing with climate change is it's a long-term problem even though it has impacts now.